Welcome to Small Biz, Big Wins, where every episode is a new journey into the heart of entrepreneurship. I'm your host, Summer Poquette, here to navigate the thrilling world of small business with you. Each week, we dive into the inspiring stories and joyful triumphs of real business owners. Get ready to be empowered with actionable advice, and most importantly, celebrate the spirit of small business. Let's dive into how every small victory shapes your big success. This is Small Biz, Big Wins. Let's make it happen. Hello, fellow entrepreneurs and small business owners. Welcome back to another episode of Small Biz, Big Wins. Whether you are a first-time listener or you're a loyal listener, thank you for tuning in. We all have the same 24 hours in a day, and for you to give me your time means a lot to me, and I take it seriously. I strive for every episode I produce to be valuable for other small business owners. So thank you for giving me the opportunity, and if you love what you hear, I hope you consider following me on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, and please take a moment to leave me a review and a comment. It means so much to me. But enough of the promo and the heartfelt thank yous. Let's get to the nitty gritty because I value you and your time. So today is a solo cast, which means it's just me, Summer Poquette. And while most podcasts are interviews with other small business owners, I'm sprinkling in some of my solo casts to impart my wisdom for what it's worth. And today I want to talk to you about mistakes and maps. Yes, maps. So I used to travel a lot for business back in from, actually it was 2011 to 2013. I traveled regularly from Michigan to Northern California as a consultant for the Shackley Corporation. I handled blogger relations and outreach, which basically means I was building an influencer program for a company before there was an influencer program um, or before influencer programs existed. I was building them which is kind of crazy to think, but that's the truth. It was a great, great gig. I loved the company, the products, the people. I loved the job. I traveled a lot. And when I flew into San Francisco or sometimes the Oakland County Airport, I relied heavily on my phone map. I was in unfamiliar territory. I live in northern Michigan, so my version of traffic on a normal day was a deer crossing. So thinking back to those days of flying into a big city, consulting for a large global company, and relying on my phone map makes me realize how, as an entrepreneur and a small business owner, we don't have directions telling us how to do things, right? We can't hit a navigation tool on a device telling us to go this way, avoid that accident, don't do this, take a shorter route, avoid that pothole. I wish that was possible for an entrepreneur. Wouldn't it be nice, though, to just hit in your map a route that you want. I want to get to this profit level. I want to do this. And a map would appear to make it all possible for you. Just follow this route. Yeah, that isn't going to happen. But here's what can happen. You can learn from other entrepreneurs and small business owners. You can listen to their lessons and you can learn from them. And It's like roads and things you can avoid and your own journey when you're listening to other small business owners and their experiences. So think of this episode of Small Biz Big Wins as your navigation device, as your Google or Apple Maps telling you to avoid a road or an accident. Because today I'm going to share with you some of my own personal oopsies in small business, starting with number one. Mistake number one was actually not starting sooner. It was doubting myself. Yes, that was mistake number one, doubting myself. If you tune in to the inaugural episode of Small Biz Big Wins, I share my story of how I started Keep It Real Social. I spent a year researching, talking to trusted friends, consulting with my mentors, basically working up the guts to take the leap to leave my full-time job. Now, looking back, I realize I didn't believe in myself enough to take that leap. Sure, timing is everything. And maybe I wasn't ready until 2018. But if you're listening to this and you don't think that you can take the leap, if you are waiting for this perfect time, stop doubting yourself and thinking that there is a perfect time. Because in reality, there never really is. Mistake number two, growing too quickly. 
They say one of the biggest reasons why a new business fails is they grow too fast. And when you grow too quickly, it's common for customer service to suffer, for your team to make mistakes, for your team to feel overburdened, for a business to lose sight of the big picture. Luckily for me, that did not happen. I did not fail because of the quick grow. Our customer service was wonderful. Our team handled the growth with such grace. I, however, I personally almost burnt myself out. I took on so much responsibility without delegating, without hiring quickly enough that I physically and mentally suffered. I put my friends and my family on the back burner to accommodate the growth, and I do not recommend doing this. It's so easy to say yes to the opportunities and want to help everyone, but at what cost? Now I'm more intentional. We have better processes and procedures in place. We have a funnel for new leads and a wait list, and we serve as many small businesses as we can based on team capacity and not sacrificing our current client commitments. And while this was a mistake on my part as a business owner growing too fast, I did take the opportunity to learn from it. And hopefully by sharing this with you, you'll avoid this very pothole. Mistake number three, subscription services. I cannot tell you how many times I have signed up for an online software service for let's say $29.99 and a year later I'm not even using that service, but I'm still getting billed for it. These software and service subscriptions add up big time. It's tempting to save the $5 and commit to the monthly subscription or pay for one year. And then after two, three months, you're not even using it. So how many months did you waste? What are you really saving? So do yourself a favor. Look at your credit card statements monthly. And if you're not using a service, unsubscribe and stop paying the monthly subscription. Every penny in a small business counts, which takes me to my next lesson, lesson number four, budgeting. I've admitted in several episodes that I'm I'm not a lover of accounting. It's just not my cup of tea. It's not my thing. And when you're a solopreneur, you can take these draws and you don't have to worry about paying anyone else but yourself and your bills. But as you grow into an entrepreneur you and you take on more, uh, you have more bills, you have employees, as you grow, it becomes more and more important to look at the numbers, especially if you want to go from being a hobby business to a profitable business. After a few years in business, you start to have these predictable items that you're paying for. For us, there's the rent has stayed consistent, utilities. There are things we know we can budget for every month consistently. And then we look at our revenue, what it is monthly, what our expenses are, and then what percentage we are putting into our profit account, and then what percentage is going to go to our tax account. And then we have line items for education, travel, marketing, promotion. So when you have that predictability after a year or two, it's easier to create those line items and have a budget to know, okay, Last year, I didn't spend anything on education, but from here on out, I want to. And so how am I going to budget to make that happen? If you Google how to create a budget for your small business, you will ha- you'll get a million different results, right? I tried it. But I suggest instead that you talk to whoever does your books and your accounting and you sit with down with them annually to create something that works for you and for your business. If you have a goal to buy a building for your business, you might have a line item for that and you might put money away monthly. Not all budgets are going to be the same for all small businesses because we all look slightly different. But whatever you do, be sure you always strive to save for two or three months of expenses to cover those hard times and those unexpected expenses. And don't forget, pay yourself. Pay yourself. 
a lot of small business owners make that mistake. Not only are they not having a budget, but they're also not paying themselves. So a book I recommend for all entrepreneurs and small business owners um, would be Profit First by Mike Michalowicz. It's a great first start. I'm going to put that in the show notes. Please check it out. You can also listen to the audio book, which is really great, but I do prefer um, the hard covered book and I have lots of the pages earmarked and notes in it. Before I share my fifth mistake in small business, let's take a break to hear from our sponsor, Keep It Real Social. Friends, are you spinning your wheels on what to post on social media? Are you frustrated that people search for your business? They're looking for your products and services, but they can't find you? Facebook and Instagram go down and you can't email your customers because you don't have an email list, let alone a how to grow one or create these beautiful monthly newsletters. Look, you're great at running your business and Keep It Real Social is excellent at marketing. So let them do what they excel at for you. Let them give you those marketing hours back so you can work on your business and not in your business. Visit keepitrealsocial.com and stop feeling frustrated because they can help. All right, welcome back to Small Biz Big Wins. Mistake number five. This is a big one. And I'm sure many of you listening can relate, but I hope not. And it is hiring. The hardest part of scaling a business, in my opinion, is hiring and firing. Nobody teaches an entrepreneur how to do this. Your business is growing. You need help. So you hire someone. And along the way, you realize that you didn't check references or that your job description wasn't really fitting for the person that you needed to hire. You feel like you're in a pinch, so you hire fast, and then you have to let someone go, and it sucks. Here are some of the mistakes I have made when it comes to hiring, and I don't want you to make them. The first is my job description was way too vague. If you want to find the perfect person, you need to be specific. What qualities are you looking for? What do you really need them to do? If you need someone to be very detailed oriented, you have to state that. I've been general and I've tried to build the plane as we've flown it and it crashed. Don't make that mistake. I've learned that I need to trust my gut in an interview and involve my team. I really suggest that small business owners interview with more than one person in the room and then conduct a second interview with your team. Sometimes you want to hire someone so badly, but your team sees that they need to be a better fit, that 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 person that you're interviewing that you really want to hire because you're in a pinch or because you just like them or because someone referred them to you, your team might find or see something that you don't. You need to have more than just your opinion involved. And then you need to trust your gut. And the times that I didn't trust my gut, I have genuinely regretted it the most. The other mistake I've made in regards to hiring is not conducting background checks and checking references. Some people can present very well. Uh, They can talk a good game in an interview, but more is revealed when you check references and you do some digging on social media and you do a background check and you call the references. Yeah, that's time consuming. But when you do it, it's helping you either confirm that this person is a good hire or raising the red flags that they're not going to be a good hire. Do your due diligence and don't rush. I've been screwed by rushing and not listening to my gut and having vague job descriptions, and I don't want that to happen to you. So make sure that when it comes to hiring, that you do that due diligence, that you have a detailed job description that is actually painting the picture of what you need, not just something that you've Googled, I need this type of you know role, and then you take that job description, but that really isn't what you need. So look at what your company needs, what that job 
um, role of that job is, what type of person you need to hire, and be detailed with that. Make sure that you check their references. You search on social media. Um, you ask around. And again, you trust your gut. Mistake number six, beating myself up. I am my very own worst critic. I think we all are, to be honest. When I screw up, I'm hard on myself. I say words to myself that I would never, ever say to someone else. I lose sleep about my mistakes. I cry about them. I dwell on them. Please don't be me. The older I get, the more I'm learning to not do this to myself, to not internalize everything I do as a failure. When it's just an oopsie and moreover, it's an opportunity to learn from because it's a mistake. I need to recognize that. I need to learn from that mistake. I need to move on from that mistake. And I need to not beat myself up. And over the course of being a small business owner, from a solopreneur to an entrepreneur to building a large team, well, it's a small team now, but it's growing. So it's going to be large someday. But the point is, it's easy for me to beat myself up. But I don't want that to be you. I want you to instead, when you have something that is an oopsie or you screwed up and you use that, you know, you signed up for that $29.99 subscription and you got billed for it for four months and you're not using it, okay, unsubscribe. Lesson learned, don't do it again. But don't beat yourself up. Don't be me. <laughs> Look, we're all human. We're all going to make mistakes in life and in business. These are just a few of mine, and some of mine are small. Some are big and have cost me money. Some I have lost sleep over and shed tears, and others I moved on a little faster than others. Well, some of I moved on from, and some I'm actually still dwelling about, but I need to not, so don't be me. But as I said, there is no roadmap for owning a small business. We can't pull up Google Maps and ask for it to get us to success the very fastest way. However, I hope sharing my mistakes can help you avoid a few roadblocks or potholes as you navigate your very own small business journey. Let me leave you with a big win because even though we are talking about mistakes, I want to leave on a high note with something to inspire you. I shared how I quickly grew and how lucky I was that it did not end my business, but how it took a toll on me personally. The year we were growing exponentially was exciting and it was tough. But in the end, I ended up winning the 2021 Entrepreneur of the Year Award for our local Chamber of Commerce. I felt so proud to win this award and to stand up in front of my community and accept it. A small business owner is often grinding. You are spending you know, countless hours, often by yourself at the beginning. You're burning the midnight oil, and it's sometimes not recognized. So for me, this was a very big win to be recognized by my peers and my local community. Friends, I hope that you have many big wins and successes in your business journey. Thanks for tuning in, and please make sure you visit the show notes that you sign up for my newsletter where I am sharing a free smart goals planning document, uh, what social media metrics you should be looking at for your small business and tracking so that you can show ROI. And if you're stumped for what to post about on social media, I'm also providing with you um, a free helpful tool to do that as well. So make sure you visit the show notes, you sign up for my newsletter and have a great week. Thank you for tuning in to Small Biz Big Wins.